Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to episode 10 of Java to Kotlin. In this episode, we're going to talk about how static works in Kotlin. It's quite a bit different, especially since there is no static keyword uh, within the Kotlin language. So when you're working with static in Java, there's generally two uh, different reasons why you would use static. The first is you have a bunch of um, utility methods that you want to um, you know, just make accessible without an instance. So for example, if we look inside of the math class, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, methods in here. We have abs, min, max, cosine, sine, um, so on and so forth. There's just a ton of uh, methods, and then there's also the constants for e um, and pi. And so essentially, you know, math, this class is just a collection that contains a ton of, um, you know, static methods inside of it. The math class, you never make an instance of the math class. The math class doesn't have any, uh, you know, instance uh, members or anything like that. It's all just a bunch of static methods that are sitting in this file, right? The other example is when you have a class that has some instance members and some static members. So you have a class where you would instantiate um, you know, you'd make instances of the class and do all of that, but there may be a static, uh, you know, a constant inside of it, or there might be a static method inside of it, but otherwise there are sort of instance uh, variables. And so we're going to look at both examples and how they would be used in Kotlin. Now before we do, one thing to note is in every episode we've written a main function, and you'll notice that we declare it as fun main and then args and whatever, but we don't annotate it as static. We don't uh, mark it as static. Um, and there's no sort of indication that it would be. And so in Java, every piece of code, every block of code must be within a class, right? Uh, but within Kotlin, that is not the case. We don't need to put all of our Kotlin code inside of classes. And so since this main function is not inside of a class, we don't need, uh, well, it will automatically be marked as static. And so here's an example. I have this util.kt file right here. Um, and it contains a name value, which is equal to Noah. And it contains a greet function, which takes a name uh, parameter and just says hello and whatever the value of name is, right? And since these two things are not inside of a class, they will be considered as static. And the interesting thing in Kotlin is, um, you know, since these two things are not inside of a class, I, there's really not a way to reference them directly, right? Like they're inside of this util file, but that's just a file. And Java doesn't really care about the file so much as, you know, a class that surrounds everything. And so what happens is, um, you know, since static and util are both within the same package, I can actually just access everything directly. So I can say, for example, greet Noah. And what will happen is it will reference the greet function that's defined inside of this util file. Since util is in the same package as static.kt, uh, both of these files are in the same package, it will reference it just like that. And so if I were to run this, uh, sorry, that is an error from a different project. Um, but if I were to run this, uh, then it would say, hello, Noah, right? And the other thing is I declared this name variable right there. So I can say greet and name. And you'll notice that it does have a reference. And it's referencing the name that's defined in the file util.kt. So it's referencing this one right here. So if I run this, it's going to say same output, you know, hello, Noah. But it's referencing the greet function that's defined in util.kt. And it's also referencing the name value that I defined in util.kt. But there's no way to directly access these. I can't, for example, say util.greet. Because even though util is the name of the file, there's no construct named util. And so this is good. This will get you somewhere for you know, simple utility functions that you want to make accessible to other files within the same package. But the problem is that you start to get a little more involved. Maybe you want to mix static and non-static members. Or maybe you have something like the math class where you want to make a collection of static uh, members accessible outside of, you know, just the package that you're in. So basically, to summarize so far, if you're not inside of a class, everything you write is static, and it can automatically be referenced by other um, code from other files within the same package, and that's what we see here. 
Um, but we're going to look at a different example that's a bit more interesting. Here's a bank account, a uh, bank account class that I took the time to write. And it's very simple. It's class bank account. It takes balance, which is a double. Um, and I made it a var, so it will save that as an instance variable. And of course, it can be changed. And I wrote two uh, methods, withdraw and deposit. And they both make sure, so when you withdraw an amount, it makes sure um, you know, if the amount, if you're trying to take out more than you have, it'll tell you you don't have enough money. If you're trying to withdraw a negative amount of money, it will not work. Otherwise, it'll subtract. And for deposit, it'll make sure um, uh, that if, sorry, if amount is less than zero, um, then it would say you are attempting to deposit a negative amount of money. And I guess this should also be that if amount is less than zero, it'll say you're withdrawing a negative amount or depositing a negative amount. And in the case of deposit, it will just add to the amount and withdraw, it'll subtract. So there's nothing special about this. It's just a pretty simple bank account class. But let's say that we want to uh, set this bank account class to have a member called ID, which is the ID number of the bank account. And to make it simple, we want to have the ID number start at one and automatically increment um, from there. So the first bank account we create will have an ID of one, the second one will have an ID of two, then three, four, so on and so forth. Now, of course, this is by no means secure or you know a good idea if you're writing an actual banking application, but for the purposes of this exercise, it will do um, just fine. And so in order to keep track, we'll go ahead and use a static, um, a static uh, variable to keep track of the latest ID, and then each time we do it, we'll, we'll increment it by one. And when we create a new bank account, we'll increment the ID by one, and, and, uh, and we'll use it. So for example, we're going to say var uh, latest ID, and we'll set it equal to one. And notice this is outside of the bank account class, so it would be considered static. Um, so we have the latest ID, and it's going to start being equal to one. And inside a bank account, when we create a new bank account, we're going to, um, you know, set it equal to uh, zero. Or sorry, when we create a new bank account, we will get the latest ID, use that as the bank account ID, and then increment latest ID by one. And then let's say that we want to write, uh, we want to make this private, so that we don't have the ability to um, to set it. We want to be able to set it within this file, but we don't want to be able to uh, set it outside of the file. And then we can write uh, a function called get latest ID, for example, and we'll just return latest ID, and that'll be an int. Um, and you know we're going to change this in a little bit, but this is just a simple example. We have this latest ID static uh, variable, and then we have the ability to get the latest ID if you want to know what the latest ID, which could also tell you how many bank accounts there are. Uh, so then we'll go ahead and um, we'll have the default constructor require, um, we will have the, the open constructor like that, um, and we're going to have it require uh, val id colon int, right? So we are requiring them to, you know, make uh, an id parameter. We'll also create a constructor that only requires the balance, and that is going to call uh, this with balance, and uh, we'll say negative one, and just like that. So essentially, what's happening is the the constructor here says that it needs to have a balance and uh, an ID. Right, but we probably generally don't want the user to set the ID. So if the user has an ID that they want to use, we can let them use it. But we can also create a constructor that just takes the balance and it's going to set the ID to be negative one. And then what we'll do is inside of this init block, we'll say if ID is equal to negative one, then that means that we need to set the ID ourselves. That means the user didn't provide us with an ID, so we need to go ahead and set it. And so what we'll say um, is we will say ID is equal to latest ID, and then latest ID plus equals one. And we need to make that a var so that that will work. Again, this is just a hypothetical example. Um, 
but uh, but it does demonstrate the idea sort of. So if the ID is negative one, then we need to set it, uh, and so we set it equal to latest ID, and then we add one, so latest ID will increment by one. And so let's just quickly show that this works. So I'm going to create um, A is going to be a bank account, and the initial balance is going to be a thousand dollars. It needs to be a double, a thousand point zero. Uh, we're going to create B, which is going to be a bank account with uh, $500, and we're going to create C, which is going to be another bank account with $250 like that. And then what we can do uh, really quick is we'll print out A.ID. Um, well, let's just print this out all in one line. So we're going to do uh, A.ID, B.ID, C.ID, and finally get latest ID. And of course, that's accessible directly because it's uh, a static a static function that's defined within a file that's in the same package as this file. And so let's run this really quick. And you'll notice that we get 1, 2, 3, 4. So the ID of A is 1, the ID of B is 2, the ID of 3 is C, and now the latest ID is 4, So or it's really the next ID. So, um, so 4 is the ID that the next bank account will get, right? Okay, so uh, so that that works exactly as we expect it to, um, but it's still a little bit ugly, and we still sort of run into a problem because even though you know latest ID is within the same uh, package, it's within the, the it's within the same file as bank account, uh, this bank account class, it's not really attached to it in any way. You can see how I can just reference you know get latest ID directly. Um, without referencing the fact that that belongs to the bank account, which is you know kind of uh, kind of weird. And the other thing is, so we have this variable, uh, this value called name here. If I tried to do something like val name equals you know I don't know whatever, it's going to give me an error and it's going to say I have this value called name here and I also have this value called name here. There's no sort of scoping, right? So since both of these have a value called name defined in them. I can't define it twice. And so in general, we don't want that to happen. It would be kind of weird if you know Kotlin had a constant pi that was defined and you could never define another one and it would be automatically defined everywhere. It makes a lot more sense to say math.pi to say you know we're dealing with math related uh, stuff and we want to get the pi constant that belongs within that math class, right? Um, and so what we can do is we can actually sort of associate the latest ID with this bank account class um, while still maintaining its static properties. And so since the static keyword doesn't exist, we actually add a field to bank account, what's called a companion object. And you'll notice that it fills in, uh, when I start typing, it fills in companion object as an idea, as a uh, completion. And so essentially within here, I can put anything I want, and it will become uh, it will be treated as if it's static. So I'm going to take all of this stuff out, and I'm going to put it in here. And you'll notice that latest ID still has a reference. It's defined still, and it's referenced right there. So so uh, so it's still defined. It still exists within that, and um, and so all of that is great. But you'll notice really quick that we get an error. So it says. Um, you know, because we have this var called latest ID, Kotlin is going to automatically generate a getter for that, but I also generated a getter myself. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of that, and instead I want to make it a var, but I want to mark it as a private set, like that. So this is a var called latest ID, and it has a private set, which means that it can only be set within the bank account class, but it can be, you know, you can get it wherever else you want to get it from. So that's basically how we convert it. And latest ID is still considered static because it's within the companion object, but it's now associated with the bank account class. And so if we go back here, I can print out, let's go back um, to what we had before actually, this. Instead of saying get latest ID or latest ID like that, I can't do that, right? Because uh, it's not globally defined. I could actually import it from the bank account companion, or better yet, I could say bank account dot latest ID. So this is what we're used to in Java, saying class name dot static member. 
So bank account dot latest ID um, is exactly what I'm doing here. And that's going to reference the latest ID within the companion object. And if I run this, you'll notice that we get the exact same output as we did before, which must mean that this is working. It must mean that latest ID is not an instance member, right? Or else it would be one every single time. Since it's within this companion object, it is in fact a static member of bank account. And so it gets incremented by one every time we make a new instance, and that is saved. So we still get latest ID is four, aka the next ID for the next bank account will be four. And one last thing that I want to mention, um, you know, any sort of uh, functions that you put within here will be uh, static. So, you know, if I make a function called x and I say bank account dot x, I can call it just like that. That makes a lot of sense. And then one last thing is that if I want to, um, you know, have uh, an interest rate and the interest rate will be, uh, we'll say, well, not 100, 0 0.06. So uh, that'll be the interest rate. What you can actually do um, if you want to declare it as a constant is you can use the const keyword. And as long as it is an integer value, uh, sorry, as long as it's a primitive type or a string, primitive type according to Java or a string, then you can define it as const and that will actually make it a compile time constant. So you'll be able to get sort of the speed ups associated with that. So not just a val in the sense that you can't uh, set the value anymore, but it's also a constant. It's a compile time constant. And so you can get some speed ups there. But of course, it's still accessible. Bank account that interest rate, it's still accessible, just like you would expect it to be. So that's all for this video. We took a look at uh, basically package level static functions and members, which uh, can be referenced anywhere within the package automatically, and also the companion object, which lets you uh, include static members inside of classes and to associate those static members with the class in question, and also a very quick look at compile time constants. There's really not anything else to say, um, but within the companion object, of course, compile time constants um, can be declared and they'll, of course, be static just like you expect. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn, and if you like this video, click the like button. See you guys soon with some more coding, and bye for now.